Welcome to Jack Paxton. Thank you very much to Jack for being here. For everyone who doesn't know Jack, he's one of the top guys running Facebook ads. He's been helping Absumo plus many other companies. I think he spent over $500 million um, on Facebook ads, but plus he is also the CEO of Viper and he has many other things. We've been talking a lot and he's just, he knows a lot about backlinking, pay ads and Absumo. Just stay tuned and he's going to teach you a few things that he wants to. Jack, thank you very thanks much for, for being here. And yeah, thanks well, for taking the time to chat. Well, Jack, tell me, um, where are you based now? So I'm originally from Australia and then uh, traveled around a little bit and ended up in Los Angeles. So I'm based in Los Angeles, have been for about five years or so. Um, so it's very similar to Australia, really. So I think that's, that's why it was an easy settling ground. <laughs> Uh, Jack, um, just for everyone, how did you, how did we get connected? I know very well, but I think that, that, that would be a good way of starting. Yeah, so I've known about you, Gerard, for a long time, well before you knew about me. Um, Ooh, thank you, man. Because, yeah, yeah, we were, um, yeah, I remember you were kind of almost one of the earlier deals that we ran ads for on AppSumo. Um, we're doing a lot of Facebook and Google ads on that. And so, yeah, just naturally, I learned a lot about find that lead. And that sort of stuff because we were obviously trying to market it and uh, that's when i first discovered you and all your tool and all that sort of stuff and then we more recently got connected with um uh with an email you shot me over about uh again common factor of AppSumo. um you know connecting over that uh blog post that was written and uh seeing if there was some some opportunities that we could uh string up together whether it's you know jumping on a call and de delivering some value to all the friends all the fans and followers or whether it's, you know, writing content, um, all that sort of stuff. So we can go into a lot of the, the different ways that um, we've been able to grow SaaS companies um, and how other people are probably growing them too, just like yourself. I love it. I love it. And I think these two big things is about um, AppSumo. It was, thank you very much for looking after us so well. And the promotion has been always so <laughs> helpful. I think AppSumo is just doing a brilliant job, but you guys, uh, the guys really who's doing the job, um, Sending that. We also, we talk with Ryan, I think, with Allman. I mean, I think the, mm -hmm. the team is just amazing. We are, yeah, sm we are small job. Spanish, we are small Spanish companies, and really it has shoot us very far, farther than what we had expected. And it helped us. It was a early investment for us. I was just mm -hmm. saying, instead of doing investment, you do AppSumo, like Limlist. Limlist also, I think, or Salesflare, we're in the swipe mm. of Medshake. I think Medshake is like in the US, but for the European companies, I think it's really mm. been a big, a big difference. And since yeah. then, when many things have been changing. And the email I sent you was about backlinking. Um, mm -hmm. Is it important backlinking? What is it? Uh, so I think it's been very important in growing our companies. Because um, the, the thing is, how you break it down is you, you have to pay for traffic somehow, whether it is paying for ads or paying with time and sweat equity. So the backlinking and SEO and content marketing, that is a lot of time commitment and, you know, it's slow, but the momentum builds. So, uh, you know, it's definitely worth investing in. And we didn't do any of it the first year that we were running Viper, for example, we were like, no, we know how to do ads. We'll just run ads. And then, you know, a few things started happening. We started like, you know, having funnels that stopped working. We started getting account bans. Um, and we realized like, you know, Facebook really just like owns our traffic funnel. Um, you know, we don't have too many other things. So we started investing in backlinking. Um, and then it took six to 12 months to sort of start getting some, some traction. But, um, but yeah, the backlinking aspect of it, if you've got a SaaS company, super important because that organic traffic is just, beautiful once you can get it flowing we're talking about uh, viper.ia is viper with y viper.ia and it's a basically a tool um for big brands to generate um help me to understand help me to tell <laughs> yeah <laughs> so no it's it's a tough one and we wish we hadn't called it viper probably it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's very hard to uh differentiate because there's like a bunch of cryptocurrency stuff involved with Viper. Uh, you know, we start as a dot I and then we have to change to a dot AI. And then uh, Viper so a bunch of issues. Then... Yeah, exactly. Um, 
so yeah, Viper helps people run giveaways, contests and referral programs. Um, it's mostly used by, you know, e-commerce brands trying to grow their email list or SaaS companies trying to do a launch. Um, I think it was so viral used... loops before. Mm -hmm. Viral loops. I yep. think it, it's, it died. Just to let you know, the domain is actually, a, I don't know if it's really? available. Yeah, but it, it's closed down just for you to check it out. But, they closed down? I had no idea. Yeah, check the that. domain. <laughs> check the domain, man. It's always a good time to buy domains when they close down. Yeah. I know because I'm yeah. check, I check. Liquidation sale. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually check. I never check with ads rates or any any people like this, but now I'm just very much into who runs the same keywords and then check them out and send them an email. And I think I remember viral looks were like not anymore on. Wow. Yeah, that's it. That's amazing. Cause they were definitely, uh, they were another AppSumo deal actually. Um, yes. The Greek but, guy uh, was doing very well. Mm, yeah. Mm. And yeah, they were definitely a competitor with Viper um, because they weren't so much on the giveaway side. We were focused more on the giveaways. Um, I think they were more into the reward programs. Um, but yeah, they definitely would have, they would have definitely overlapped with our tool. So it's interesting mm. to know and shows how, Why you didn't how do a I need to pay more attention. <laughs> Why you didn't do Viper on AppSumo? Um, so a few reasons. Um, they had King Sumo, so there was mm. kind of like a conflict of interest. Um, yeah. Also, we were running all the ads, so there was also mm. a conflict of interest. Yeah. Um, so it was just better to keep them separate. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we kind of did one or two lifetime deals ourselves, but we were charging like, you know, $600, yeah. um, which AppSumo would have never done. Yeah. And, um, and then after that, we sort of stopped and changed it to monthly only. Um, mm -hmm. And so we didn't, we only ran like one, or, I think we ran like two, two give, uh, two lifetime deals. Mm -hmm. And then obviously we ran a third lifetime deal at the very start when we were first on product hunt. So mm -hmm. I think there were three in total. So there's a bunch of lifetime accounts out there. So they're very rare at this point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, I would just tell you if, you were going to start a new company now and mm -hmm. you had a thousand dollars. That's it. A thousand dollars, a new website. The idea it's kind of like an MVP. Where would you put those thousand dollars? Just imagine so, that I give you like a, a package, your company, mm -hmm. your domain, MVP is kind of working. You start from zero. Where do you put those thousand dollars? No, that's a great question. Um, and is there a time limit or like, mm, or can I put in time? Yes, yes, yeah, I, I, I do accept time limit. I mean, just come <laughs> on. You want to launch it? I would say as far as, as fast as you can without killing it. Okay. So let's say I need to launch within three months. Okay, good. I okay. Like, so we'll specify this question next time. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, with a thousand dollars, you can just <laughs> drag it out over it, years, it which I know a lot second. of founders do. Um, well, you move to Thailand or to, or to Turkey, man, and you can stay for like a few months, uh, longer than in yeah. Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a few days. It's a week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would say, okay, with $1,000, first off, I would want to tap my network to see what sort of partnerships I could um, get going. Uh, and that would hopefully generate um, maybe some joint blog posts and joint emails some joint webinars and joint training. It's free actually yep. join, uh, asking your network. Mm -hmm. And then that's free. And then I would probably spend a thousand dollars trying to promote those partnerships. Um, so trying to get people to attend those webinars or to join that email list um, and try and build that audience with the thousand dollars. And then once I have an audience and I've delivered a bunch of value, I would then try and sell them on their like, you know, exclusive beta access or you know pre-launch access or something like that I, I like this and let's go deeper because i'm i'm interested in that um for us and let's say a thousand dollars where you put would you just go to facebook and run people who's just checking who's checking up sumo to bring it to the interview and probably google ads stuff like this yeah so it would depend on my app so if it was you know a SaaS app that was focused on, let's say marketing. Um, I would probably think about, you know, the type of customer that want to join the webinar or the joint training. Um, and then I would probably go after targeting interests that they would have or targeting keywords that they would be searching 
for the problem that my pro that my product solves. Um, so it would probably be a combination of Facebook, um, Instagram, and Google. I find those are the three highest quality quality channels. B two B and SaaS is usually better on Google, but getting someone onto a webinar from Google isn't as effective as kind of like Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. If you're doing like a free course or a free webinar or a free PDF or a free, free summit or something like that, usually you need the visuals that, you know, Instagram and Facebook give you to mm -hmm. sell the, the hype rather mm -hmm. than, um, you know, More it's very important. search intent uh, mm -hmm. based on Google. So I think like probably, uh, Sumo guys would go better in, in Facebook type of thing and, Freelancers, yep. SaaS, it's big, it's, I think it's more like a B2C than B2B products on mm -hmm. AppSumo. No, that's like... Yeah, they're a weird hybrid. They're sort of, they're servicing B2B, but it's really still consumers buying it. Yes, um, yes. And it's still like that one-time purchase, which is the yes. attractiveness to it. I'm actually, um, you know, sometimes it's like, mm, AppSumo, I don't know, the product might be too cheap, even that we've been in there. and. But still, sometimes it's like the sticker mall, you know, the, the stickers things. Oh, man, this yeah. has been, I've been crazy. You know, I bought like, I don't know how many deals. I, I did stickers for everyone in the family. Yeah, it's like, wow, man, sticker mall. These are big. We do have Spanish companies and I, I don't know, $9 and they send you 50 stickers. I had to do the trick to buy like four or five deals to send it over. But it's like, oh. Yeah, it's, it is it is funny. It is good. Mm. Okay, that means we you just blow. Volume, yeah. yeah, you just blown a thousand dollars on Facebook ads and Google ads. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yep. Sending emails. Yeah, yeah. So, in terms of that, though, like the outcome of that is delivering the value and getting them on your email list. Um, and then, you, if you're just getting started, you could use something like Mailchimp and not even have to pay for your email service provider. Mm. Um, and. We but the important part here is you've got to deliver the value to get them to open your email that you send them. Mm. Um, the other thing you could do is to increase your average, op like to increase your open rate. You know, you could say that you're sending one person, maybe a free account. So announce it in the training or announce it in your webinar that like, Hey, I'm going to give out, um, you know, three people in the audience, a free account, free six month account, make sure you open the first email I send you. Mm. So give them some value and then tell them what you, what you want them to do next so that you're getting those really high open rates. And then in that email, you could give them a special kind of like attendee only discount. You could be like, Hey, unfortunately, you know, we gave the accounts to Joe, Jim and Jeff. And, you know, to say, thank you for participating. We're going to give you an exclusive six month, you know, half price discounted rate or something. I, I, it's funny because we, we, with, with terrible, it was like, it sounds so easy when you tell it, but then when you're running it, I think with Viper, probably you have the same thing. It's like, man, fuck, what I'm doing wrong. We're launching now a new company, Mirkat. We don't even have a drip on it. We just have a registration. I don't even know where it goes. You, you, you're you crazy developing the tool, but then it's like, okay, users, it's mm. important. Well, it's, product it's 50, 50. Um, mm. like, you know, the, if you've got the users and a bad product, it's not going to work. If you've got a good product and no users, it's not going to work. So and you have you users need to have product, you need the marketing to make them pay and, and upsell yeah. and upgrade <laughs> and, and recommend, isn't it? Yeah. So you definitely need a combination, but I think, I think the product is more important 100%. at the start because no matter how good your marketing is, if you have like, you know, really high churn or people get in and your product breaks all the time, that word of mouth is going to spread and that's going to be negative and make your marketing harder and harder and harder. So I do think focusing on product first is, is definitely the way to go. We were, I remember find we were, I don't know, I think they've been the first up sumo we were three or four sales guys and two programmers or three guys behind. I was like, I was so pushing on sales, sales, sales. It's like, no man, no, no, wrong, wrong. Uh, Product, 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 product. We don't have sales yeah. guys, and we will never have sales guys. I don't think it's any point. Plus, we our revenue is so we put down our revenue, and then what revenue per account, not revenue in total, obviously, but revenue per account. And it was 
and it's a point of deciding what's a real good price and without having mm. sales guys and for us pricing um, pricing is hard it's a re- yeah. like one of the hardest things to do pricing pricing is hard you know the last pricing that we did was the netflix pricing mm-hmm. and we said fuck it guys let's do a nine dollars type of thing and if people want to it's like the front product and wow mm-hmm. man it's been like yeah they never you they always say don't put your price lower x and y and we say mm-hmm. we want to have hundreds of thousands of users and and okay. that's why we put the netflix price nine dollars and it's working very well People never churn, and it's just more hassling to go to take the nine dollars. But obviously, and from there, upsell is super, super important. And this is yeah. this is our thing. And product, product. When you have a lower price, I think it's product, product, product. It helps us to improve so much. Yeah. I think, well, I think yeah, that's a few few key things you hit on there for anybody listening who's thinking about this. Um, you know, one, you definitely need to have something to upsell. Um, just charging a low fee and not having an upsell is not a great idea. Um, the other thing is you've got to think about your variable costs. So for example, if you have, you know, hosting, you send out a bunch of emails, you host a ton of traffic, you can't charge a low fee because, or if you're hosting a bunch of video, because all of that on the backside costs you a ton of money. So you've got to think about like, Hey, what are my variable costs per account? And then be like, okay, well, that's my baseline of how much I can charge. Now, where do I go from there? Hmm. Yeah, we we are we're testing every day. We we just like okay, so we done so many wrong things. We're still living. We're growing like a lot this this last month. We obviously with coronavirus, it's bad for the world, but it's actually very mm-hmm. good for sales tools. And we are a sales tool, and it's been helping us. And yeah, it's been amazing this. for online. Um, yeah. You know, all of the all Digital e-commerce products. has gone online. Um, everybody needs SaaS tools to function uh, properly online. Um, and you know, I, the the complete sales cycle has changed. You know, it's now you know a lot of you know email, uh, LinkedIn, uh, and then it Zoom is. meetings. It's not really phone calls and Rolodex anymore. <laughs> yeah, and one thing that uh, we've seen is. GDPR with it's it's Europe, but now it's mm. it's war time, man. This is war time. This is like the third world country, and and people it's just like don't give a shit about GDPR anymore, and yeah. they're doing the things not to get a penalty, mm-hmm. but they re that like re, they reopen the flow of sending emails, and probably they're yeah. not doing that just like spammy, but the B2B type of emails, people is like, okay, this is war time, man. Let's send emails and let's yeah. really push the Sink sales. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and people is going, we've seen that probably the US market was very open, but the, the European Spanish market, people has gone crazy, really. they we, wow. we need to think like Spain used to be like a sales guy coming to your door. If not, I don't do business. And now it's like, no, no, this business is already on the internet. And yeah. I think it's it's a brilliant time to grow on any sales tools, any digital tools. And after yeah. all, you, you, you... I was going to say... I'm oh, sorry, again. No, no, oh, no. I was going to say, I was, um, I was talking to a friend the other day. We were doing another podcast, actually. And he had done a bunch of market research about people switching services and products and brands during a pandemic and people, I can't remember the exact stats, but I think he found that like 80% of people are now willing to uh, try a new brand or try a new service during, you know, coronavirus. So if you are a new brand and you're competing against those really large brands that have, you know, a foothold on an industry, now's the time to disrupt that because people are just so open to trying new things and trying new tools just to get some sort of change in their life or their workflow or um or see if there's a way they they can improve something. Um, they've got the time. Uh, well, to, um, to I do never the thought right I now. would be. I never thought I would be a big brand to be honest. But then I saw mm. those things that they say Uber, um, Wallapop, or what else? Uh, Airbnb. Each one came from a crisis. It's like I may have a little chance to be something in, in the next eight years, you know. And for everyone listening, I think it's it's a beautiful time. And if you are already in the digital, you have, we are ahead of most of the people. 
How about yeah, the well, Facebook ads, Google ads? Has they gone up? Has they gone down? And um, so this last month has been terrible for uh, running ads just because of the elections in the US. So if you're targeting the US, you would have found that you know Facebook was being a lot more restrictive in their uh, review policies, a lot of ad account bans, a lot of uh, ad rejections. They were kind of like over. We know because we scrape Instagram and we had to stop scraping Instagram for a while. <laughs> and yeah, I said, yeah. Uh, like the team said, guys, let's stop until after the election because uh, that's it. Yeah, man. So it was it was tough for the people who were running ads uh, definitely last month. I think it'll get better. Um, Google wasn't as affected, but um, but yeah, I think I think from previous uh, bad experiences, <laughs> Facebook was overly protective this election <laughs> good and and then is is do you think during after now the elections but uh during the coronavirus the facebook ads because a moment was dropping down like crazy uh mm -hmm. facebook and google but it's now a little bit higher or to the same state as it was before yeah so some of us so on the ad agency side some of our clients had the best months in april may june um because you know we've been working with them for a while we were like guys don't panic you're a direct consumer you guys are in a good spot all the large consumers pulled their ad budgets all of the guys who were kind of like still able to operate still able to fulfill orders just dominated because there was nobody else running ads so their cpms were really low everybody's conversion rate was crazy high because everybody's sitting at home they can't leave the house there's nothing to do they're just online shopping you know they still had money they still had stimulus checks coming in so it was really a golden period um, mm. of when that first started. And then reality sort of started to set in. Stimulus checks ran out. Uh, people started losing their jobs and that sort of thing. So I think people's spending restricted. Um, some of the bigger uh, platforms and the bigger brands started spending again. And then obviously once you That's went it. into the election, the government just started spending. Mm. <laughs> um, and they have a ton of money. And so that really inflated everything. And the main issue with that wasn't necessarily the increasing CPMs. It was the ad policies and the restrictions and the ad bans that actually caused a lot of the issues and the disruption to the regular flow of how the ad work, ads work and or how all the auction works and all that sort of stuff. So I think the last two to three months have been pretty tough. Um, the first kind of like three to four months of coronavirus are really good. Um, so, you know, if you timed it well and you spent big in the start, held off during the election and now start spending again, you'd probably be in a really good place. Um, some people, like we advise most people to just maybe decrease budgets a little bit while it was a little bit turbulent because starting and stopping always, um, always kind of makes you start from scratch again. Um, so we were just kind of advising people to, to drop their budgets a little bit. And then now it'll probably start ramping up for, you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday and holiday oh, shopping. Black sort of Friday stuff. is coming, man. Black Friday is mm. coming. I think everyone is excited to see. We, we usually before a few weeks before Black Friday, we see a drop on sales and then it's like people yep. is waiting. What are we going to do this year? It's good. It's good. Yeah. Well, the sad thing uh, is it keeps getting earlier and earlier. Like I was scrolling through Facebook today and I was already seeing Black Friday deals. I was like, it's only, what, November 4th? <laughs> That's it, man. You are, we are in the loop. And this is like Christmas. And this is like everyone is already waiting. And people is asking to us, like, okay, what, what does you need for, for Black Friday? It's like, okay, no, oh, I don't want to give my product away. Last year, I think last year, did we do a... I think we were in the Black Friday day for a few weeks. And it helped mm. us so much as well, which is yeah. good. How, and um, what about SEO backlinking? Uh, what should you point on the on, on on this? And you can give us some advice to everyone who's listening mm. and, and actually reading because we're going to be transcribing that. Yeah. So what we've kind of learned over the last few years of doing SEO is there's kind of like a balance. There's a balance between finding good partners. So good partners being you know, other people who have blogs where you can do guest post exchanges, you can introduce, you know, people to other people who own blogs. And there's this kind of almost this little network of content marketers that are all just kind of like working to help each other get um, good content published, get backlinks published and help each other raise uh, everybody's domain ranking essentially. 
So one component is finding good partners and becoming part of a network like that. Um, now you obviously need to be careful around that because you don't want to be, you know, in too kind of like much of a cahoots against Facebook, uh, sorry, against Google, because they will, you know, ban accounts or not really ban them, but penalize them in their updates. I think for if you're doing it manually, linking. if you're doing it manually, it's impossible to get penalized, isn't it? Or if you don't, I would never say impossible, but okay. <laughs> it's definitely uh, something that you don't want to try and automate too much. Mm -hmm. um, because the more personalized you make it and the more one-to-one -one you make it, Facebook, uh, Google is happy with that um, because they know that you're trying to actually create better content for the search queries that people are searching for. So that brings me to my second point. Uh, quality of the content is really important. If you're just sitting there spinning out low quality guest posts, you know, that's going to end you in, uh, that's going to put you in the spam bucket in Google's eyes. So even if you are doing guest posts, they still need to be high quality you still need to be linking to high quality websites and getting links from high quality websites. If you get a bunch of links from low quality sites or a lot of the content that's linking to you or from you is low quality, they're going to assume that your website is low quality. So always think about, you know, minimum kind of like 1500 word posts, not too many links, um, you know, adding value, making sure people are actually reading the content and it's providing some value. Uh, that sort of stuff is really important. And then the third component is the keyword research and the, um, you know, the on-page SEO stuff. So that's really kind of finding the right keywords that you can create content around and then solving that query that someone's looking for. And then once you've solved that query, getting links from relevant sites for that query. Um, mm -hmm. That's something that we found that was really important. So if we're writing a blog post on how to grow Instagram followers with giveaways, we want to get links in other blog posts or from other websites that focus on Instagram content mm. or focus on giveaway content. And those links Google sees as relevant. So they're like, okay, that must be a good piece of content to rank for, you know, how to get, how to grow followers on Instagram because all of these giveaways and Instagram websites are linking to this one article. So that's kind of like three steps that I think we've yeah. learned um, over the I, last two years. <laughs> I think, I think, what, well, I don't think, I, I know what you're saying is obviously it's, it's the, it makes so much sense because I just asked to my teammates, it's like, okay, check the last thing you check in Google, where you end up. Okay, I don't know how to do backlinking correct. You end up to an amazing post, probably a YouTube video that links to, so just, just see the patterns of other companies because I'm not a big reader of, okay, what's the next algorithm, BERT or whatever from Google. Mm, just yeah. just see what what's your last search, man. Where it brought you? For example, yesterday we were in Turkey and I was like, where are we going for lunch? Mm. What do you do? Some people go to Instagram. Some people don't go to Google. I like to go to YouTube. It's like I go mm. and check where I go to for lunch. And then it's this guy food streets around the world. And one then is Turkey. I was like, wow, this is such a brilliant thing. I follow him. I really like him. This is about mm -hmm. that, man. And, and it's so, in a way, okay, it's difficult. But everyone has a niche, number one. Mm. Everyone has a niche, and I think it's a magic of doing it correctly with value. And once you nail that, it's just like, oh, I was looking at that channel, and it's it's called chopsticks, yeah. uh, chopsticks, travel chopsticks, or something like this. Oh, <laughs> That's a and, good name. I like it. Yeah, and it makes me think, okay, how he's doing it, and and mm. this is this is so beautiful. Just take examples of what works for anyone else and, and do it for yourself. Obviously, sometimes I see Neil Patel, which is a little bit, no, not a little bit, a thousand years Still late from where I am. <laughs> and, and it's, good, you know, it's, 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 it's a good way. He says one of the things is, okay, tell them if your business is how to grow Instagram is how to grow Instagram, but first show them how to open a net, how to open an Instagram, how mm. to find the first 1,000 followers. And it's kind of like, yeah. be honest and don't be just, just, just pushy. And it's not just, don't think about SEO, think about what people really want to hear when you talk about mm. the topic, which is like, put, the, put all the love and thought is how you make a cake, is how you make SEO for your company. 
It's no shortcut yeah. how to make the cake. You cannot put the oven faster. That's it, man. You will yeah. burn the cake. And yeah, no, it's it's a good thing. And I think Neil Patel is always pushing, you know, the user over the algorithm, um, which is something something good to keep in mind because, you know, I think there is a segment of people that, you know, they do find black hat ways of doing stuff. They do have find, they do find ways to cheat, cheat the system, but it always catches up to them. Um, you know, they only get away with it for so long. Mm. Um, if you want to like have something that's steady and continually just refers you traffic and generates you traffic. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a step, it's a staircase. Yeah. It's a little a step-by-step thing which is very good <clears throat> jack i'm going to call it now and what I'm, i'm going to ask you is um i will call you later because i want to ask a few questions and i think we can start working together but for everyone if anyone wants to contact jack uh what's the best way to get back to you sure so uh you can just directly email at jack at hyax h-y-a-x dot com if you have any questions around that um We have a bunch of content uh, and guides and trainings and webinar and seminar recordings on top growth marketing on YouTube. So, you know, instead of buying a course, go just watch a bunch of those recordings. I sell the exact same stuff in my courses. <laughs> so get it for free from YouTube. Um, we have a great blog on viper.ai, V-Y-P-E-R.ai. And that is where we do most of our SEO stuff. So you'll see, a lot of in-depth guides on how to grow your business and that sort of stuff. So I would check out those three. Um, yeah. So email, YouTube and blog. Those are the best ways to, we'll to get the sure most value. We'll put everything in the description, which is going to be easy for sharing. Jack, thank you very much. Let me send you a link over email and let's talk because I want to, I want to tell you a few things. Okay. Thank yeah, you very sure, much guys. To. And see you now, see Jack. See you later. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye. Bye.